Hello and welcome to the Thursday, May 4th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today wrote about an increase in scans for configuration files on his Honeypot. This is something that we have also been tracking in the Honeypots deployed by our volunteers in our DShield Honeypot network. I've written a couple times about this in the past, but what it really comes down to is that if you have any configuration file like environment variables or the like in your root web directory, they probably have been leaked. There are a number of different uh, name variations and so that are being attempted here. If you go to our Honeypot data, the web Honeypot data page, you can see sort of that the, the, among the top hits uh, for any given days recently, there were things like .env, uh, Amazon.env, .env backup and uh, various variations of uh, these uh, configuration file names. So uh, double check that you haven't left any configuration files like this in your home directory. And not unexpectedly, Google today announced that if you have an account uh, with uh, any of the uh, Google sites, you will now be able to use passkeys and also make passkey your exclusive way how you are logging in to your Google account, meaning that you will no longer need a password, but you also will no longer be able to use a password if you wish to do so. So this is an option that you have. What excites me about this is a passkey is really sort of the next step in that uh, FIDO2 Alliance uh, motion to passwordless authentication. It's a really interesting technology. It builds on top of the sort of web auth and ecosystem that has evolved in the last few years. What I find kind of exciting about passkeys versus some of the earlier kind of implementations of uh, these FIDO standards is that it does address some of the usability issues. You do not need to buy a token unless you want to. You can use your existing mobile phone or computer or such as an authenticator. Also, they're now explicitly supporting syncing of passkeys across different devices. There's also the ability to, for example, use a mobile phone that has a passkey installed that's in close proximity to a desktop in order to log in. Google is really pushing this, but all the operating systems and all of the big uh, companies like Apple, Microsoft, Mozilla are fully supporting passkeys and uh, recent versions of operating systems like iOS, macOS, Windows have added passkey support. So you already have the authenticator. You don't necessarily have to buy anything new to use passkeys. Some of the shortcomings at this point are, well, uh, still there are some issues with support, for example, for Chrome OS. Not sure how popular of an issue that is. And the other issue is that, yes, you can sync these passkeys across devices, but the syncing uses your operating system's syncing mechanism. So if you're on Mac OS, it would be the Mac OS keychain or the Apple keychain that's being used, which works fine if you only have Apple devices. But at this point, there is sort of no easy way at least to synchronize your uh, keys across different operating systems from a different uh, manufacturer. So you're kind of uh, linked to your ecosystem, like whether that's Microsoft, uh, whether that's Google, or whether that's Apple. I certainly hope you'll give it a try. I'll uh, do so later. I haven't gotten around to it yet. I plan to support passkeys on the Internet Storm Center website. We still have sort of some basic infrastructure we need to update to really support that. But once that is in place, a passkey support will certainly be something that uh, I'll be working on adding. And well, uh, more security news from Google, this time from Google Chrome. Google also announced that starting with Chrome 117, which is expected to be released in September, HTTPS websites will no longer be marked with a lock icon. Over, I don't know how many years now, whenever you visit an HTTPS site, you sort of saw that little lock icon. 
The reason Google thinks that the lock icon is no longer needed and actually somewhat counterproductive, uh, well, uh, there are actually a few reasons for that. First of all, HTTPS is now normal, so you don't necessarily need to point out that a particular website is normal. The other issue they noted in user testing that many users do equate the lock icon with basically telling them that the website is secure. And that is not just secure in terms of encryption and TLS, but it's actually a good website, a trustworthy website, which definitely is not true with pretty much all phishing websites these days, also using TLS, just like any other website. They will replace the lock icon with a more neutral icon. They call it the tune icon, which basically is sort of often used for settings and configurations. You'll still be able to click on it and, for example, see certificate details and the like, just like what you now do with the lock icon. And researchers found what looks like a somewhat practical attack in order to extract secrets from AMD's TPM implementation. TPM, that's this trusted uh, processing module that's part of most modern uh, systems. It's typically used to, for example, in the Windows world, store BitLocker keys and the like. It's supposed to be specifically designed to not allow access to cryptographic material to an attacker who has physical access to the system, which of course is always a difficult task to achieve. To pull off the attack, an attacker does need, of course, physical access to the motherboard, does need to be able to connect specific equipment to the motherboard, and then use a so-called voltage fault injection attack in order to then extract secrets. Apparently, it takes a couple hours to perform the attack, but the attack does appear somewhat feasible. This, of course, is important if you're relying on TPM, for example, to protect you if your device got lost or stolen. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. And any feedback, always uh, please you know, keep coming with uh, any feedback. Repeat it if uh, it's still a problem for you, if it's still something I need to fix. Sometimes uh, the sort of uh, squeaky wheel principle applies here. So let me know if there's anything I can fix, uh, any stories that I missed. And as usual, if you like the podcast, please leave some feedback in your favorite podcast platform. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.